The MCAT is arguably the most important exam you will take to get into medical school. In this video, I will show you that it's more important how you study rather than how long you study. I developed a 98 day strategy that made my score jump from the 50th percentile on practice tests to 97th percentile when I actually took the exam. Hey guys, Zach here. I'm a second year medical student in Philadelphia and I was kind of hesitant, honestly, to make this video in the beginning because first off, I don't wanna be that guy that's like, oh, look at my score, I did so well on the MCAT, copy me, blah, 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 blah. Um, but on the other hand, I see all these people scoring in the 99th percentile and the 100th percentile, so I was a bit like scared to make this video. In the end though, I decided to make the video because when I was kind of struggling and stressed out about this big exam that I knew had such a huge factor on whether or not I would get into medical school, the thing that helped me out the most was looking at other people's study strategies and they laid out every day and what they were gonna do every day. So I thought um, I could maybe help other people that were struggling or not really sure how to study by giving my study strategy that really made me feel better about studying and helped me do pretty decently on the exam. Okay, so let's get into it. For my exam, I combined the MCAT Jelly 2015 schedule and the 100 Days to MCAT Success Guide, both of which are linked to below, and I adjusted that strategy to 98 days. I also spent an embarrassingly long amount of time on crafting my Excel sheet study plan, but I did it in hopes that when you guys look at it or you show it to someone, they will be able to say, hmm, this seems like a decent strategy. Maybe I can take some stuff from the strategy leave out other things and make a, my own study plan that helps me and applies to me and makes me study the best I possibly can. So what materials did I use? Well, the core materials I used are the Exam Crackers full set, the Berkeley Review 10 book set with questions, um, four Exam Crackers full length exams, and two next step exams. I think this is called like Blueprint now or something like that, but I'm sure they still sell exams. And then the most important thing I use, the most important thing that every student will use is the AAMC MCAT official prep bundle. This is the bundle of material or the content of material that is study material that is written by the same people that write the actual MCAT exam. So yeah, this is, this is the good stuff. This is the gold material here. I also use Khan Academy for MCAT studying, but unfortunately the MCAT section goes away in September of 2021. So jump on that if you haven't already. And finally, I used an amino acid memory like map video, which was really helpful for me. And it teaches you like the charge, the three letter name, one letter name, the structure, everything you really need to know. Um, I link that again in the description down below. I took my test three years ago now, so I talked to a couple friends and saw how they're studying right now. And I talked to a couple friends that just took it and see how they did to do well. They used a lot of those same things, but there are some new resources out now that you might wanna try out. There's an Anki deck by Premed95 that I heard is pretty good. And there's this Reddit resource like compilation, which has a Google doc of a bunch of different content for each section of the MCAT exam that I'll link down below. So what was my average study day? What did, how did I actually study for this thing? Well, I studied six to eight hours a day, starting on the dot at 8 a.m. And I mimicked, or I wanted to mimic the actual exam as close as possible. So what do I do? I'd wake up at seven, chill out, and then I'd start at eight studying 90 minutes, and then break for 10 minutes. And then I'd study for 90 minutes, break for 30 minutes, and then I would study for another 90 minutes and break for 10 minutes, and then I would study for 90 minutes and be done. I did this study way because this is the way the actual MCAT is laid out. I'm mimicking, even in my studying, the way the actual MCAT's gonna be, and I feel like this is one of the major reasons that when I actually got to test day, I didn't feel burnt out. I was like, oh, it's just another day of studying. So. How did I break up my study schedule where, well, the first half of my study schedule was learning content and doing practice questions. And then for the second half, I did question banks and practice tests. I wanted to get to practice tests as fast as possible because those are shown from a bunch of other people who have taken the test and from my personal experience to be where you'll see the biggest improvement in scores. Overall, I think I studied seven hours a day for 90 days out of the 98, which equates to around 600 30 hours of studying. 
So let's start off with content, the first half of my study. I would break up each exam cracker chapter into three passes. So I would wanna look at each exam cracker chapter three times. And you'll be like, wait, Zach, you have this other video on rereading re and how it's bad and taking notes and how it's bad. Yes, I do. I wouldn't reread each time. What I would do is I would go through each chapter in a different way that way, I would almost taking advantage of spaced repetition because I would do the first way of reviewing it one day, then the second way of reviewing it the next day, and then I would wait a week and do the other way of reviewing it. Also on those same days, I would look at the Berkeley Review and correlate questions from the Berkeley Review to that content piece on the Exam Crackers chapter. The key to getting the best out of these exam cracker chapters is having three passes of the material. So what is each of those passages? Well, I'll lay it out. The first pass or the X.1 or day one is your first pass of that material where you're gonna be reading and understanding what's going on. So what do I do on this first day? Well, I just look over it as if I'm reading a magazine, just a quick pass over the material, looking at the pretty pictures and the diagrams and just getting a general feel for the content. This process is not a long process. I'm sure you all have experience reading magazines and I don't think I've ever looked at a magazine for longer than 30 minutes. And you shouldn't look at this chapter for longer than 30 minutes. Just get a general feel for it. Next, I wanna go into the bold-faced words. Look at all the bold-faced words and make sure you understand every word that's bold. If you don't understand every word that's bold, how are you gonna understand what's going on in the chapter and what's being talked about? It's gonna be really tough. Look it up on Wikipedia, maybe make an Anki flashcard, do whatever you can to just understand that word. And now comes the long part where you read through this chapter slowly and carefully. This long pass takes a decent amount of time, but this is where I'm really understanding what's going on. I'm trying to answer the questions inside the passages and seeing if I get the whole picture, the general idea of what's taught in each exam cracker chapter. So that's day one done. I would wait a day and then do X.2. And what is X.2? Skim and test. So on this second day, what I would do is I'd skim the chapter briefly. And at the end of every exam crackers chapter, there's usually like a mini quiz, a mini 30 minute exam. And I'll go through those questions really slowly and really carefully to make sure I understand what they're asking. If I got a question wrong, obviously I'll make a note of that, but I also wanna be able to understand why I got it wrong and why the right answer is right. And then I'll take that even another step to see if I could explain this question that I got wrong to a friend. So the question is blah, blah, blah. Could I explain why the right answer is to a friend if they didn't know anything that was going on, if they were completely new to the chapter? Now this usually takes some time, but this is where the real understanding happens. This is where you're converting these mishmash of words on the page to understandable words inside your head, which is where the most retention and content understanding happens. And if I really didn't get it, and I really thought I need to look at this again, I would make a flashcard out of it. Now, nowadays you should probably do Anki, but what I did at the time is I had physical flashcards and I had three piles. One was don't know, the other was kind of no, and the third was a no cold. And this no cold section was, I would be able to answer that card correctly at least three times in a row. I'd just be able to look at it and be like, bam, I know it. What is the powerhouse of the cell? Mitochondria, bam, easy. I just throw that card away, I know it, easy. So the third pass of the material, you do this pass a week after you go through day two. And what you do on this third pass is you want to try and answer the questions you got incorrect. Do these questions that you got incorrect again, obviously without looking at the answer that you wrote down before. But this helps you because if you get it incorrect again, you really wanna make sure you make a flashcard out of that question because that might be a sticking point for you. So let's look at an example day on my study guide. So on day 11, it says, Fizz 2.1, BioS 1.2, and Chem 1.3. That means that day I am doing a first pass of Exam Crackers Physics Chapter 2, a skim and test of Exam Crackers Biology and Systems Chapter 2, and a redo of the incorrect questions of Exam Crackers Reasoning Skills Chapter 4. That's the content review. And so you'll usually be doing those three in one day. There is a column to the right of that though that is left out of this picture. And what that column is, is the Berkeley Review questions. These are these practice questions that I painstakingly correlated to the content review, the content sections in Exam Crackers. And I don't know if these are current or consistent with the current Berkeley Review, but I don't think the Berkeley Review changes around their sections that much. So if you're using my guide, 
day for day, make sure to check in the very clear view that those questions are the right questions correlated to that piece of content you're learning. An important point, that when you're doing these practice questions from the Berkeley review is that you don't wanna go through all of them and then review them. What you wanna do is as you're reviewing them, like maybe you do three questions and then look at the answers to the questions. See why you got them wrong. See what piece of content you need to relook at because I don't wanna go through maybe two, three hours of practice questions and get the same kind of question wrong multiple times. I wanna learn that material and then apply it to the next question. And Again, you won't be doing this in practice testing, but you're not in practice testing. You're in like kind of content review section. So do the questions, look at the answers, and then apply this to the next questions you'll take. So now we get to the good stuff, the practice testing. At day 45, I switch to full length exams and question packs. So make sure you do every single piece of AAMC content, every single piece. Because again, this is written by the same people that will write the exam. I'll go over an example day here. So for example, one day was usually taking the test, um, mimicking test conditions exactly. So 90 minute, 10 minute, 30 minute, 90 minute, done. So take a test mimicking test conditions and then you're done. The next day, come back to it and review each question slowly and carefully. This should take as long as it took you to take the full length exam. You wanna be looking at your incorrects and seeing, hmm, why didn't I understand that question? Why are the incorrect answers incorrect? Could I explain this question to a friend? Finally, add the questions that you think you got wrong that might be sticking points as a flashcard to your Anki or something like that. So that's it. Um, you can and will beat this test. Have a plan before you start studying. Stick to your plan and stay consistent. Remember why you are studying so hard for this test. It's to go to the medical school of your dreams. It's to become a doctor. It's to be, and eventually be able to be in a hospital treating people, helping people. And it's a really great and cool like a life goal to have. Um, but yeah, stick to your plan and you'll be fine. I had a goal of 512 and I thought I would score around there and I ended up scoring a 518 with the breakdown of 130, 128, 130, 130. And what I learned and what this kind of summer of misery studying taught me is that hard work will pay off. Put in the time and you will get the score you want. But that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I know you guys are going to crush this exam. See you in the next one. Okay, maybe it's cringy, it's definitely cringy, but as a little bit of uh, motivation every morning, I have uh, this. Well, as you can see, we have McEnroe, but then below it, we got uh, my MCAT score, which I put here, just so I look at every morning. It says, see, hard work works. <laughs> Doctor incoming, you can do anything, boy.